What is up, guys? It's another Music Gear Monday. I got a question that was asking me how to sample audio, vocals in particular, into the DJS 1000. And actually, it can get pretty tricky with routing audio to the DJS 1000 and getting it back out. It's simple, but it's complicated at the same time. We're going to get into that today. We're going to talk about it and kind of break down, in particularly with the setup that I have. So let's get into it. All right. Currently, have this DJS. 1000 connected. I have my OP1 running through my S11, my DJ mixer down here. I don't know if you could see it, but I have my synth running through this mixer, my microphone running through this mixer, the booth out of this mixer running into the DJS, and then the master of the DJS is running into my line mixer over here, which is what you guys are hearing everything on. My DJ mixer is running to the DJS and it's running to what you guys are hearing as well. So you get to hear both sides of it. If you don't run a split signal, you're not able to monitor your voice or your synth. You're only able to hear that through your DJS headphone out here. That's going to allow you to basically monitor through when you're sampling things. This guy was made for a you know CDJ setup with a 900 mixer. That 900 mixer, you could run your sends back into the DJS and through the 900 mixer, you could monitor your input so you don't have to route it the way that I routed it. I only did this because I'm using a S11. I also do the same thing when I'm using my RX3. Those mixers do not have sends on them for you to do this with, but you do have two master outs on S11 and you do have two master outs on the RX3 that you can use to send one of those signals to your DJS. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Somebody asked me how to record vocals onto the DJS. It has the same concept as recording a synth. So these are all loops that I just made with this OP1 right here. And what we're gonna do is, let's just go ahead and offload these loops. The only thing we're gonna keep is the kick drum here. So this kick drum is what we're gonna keep. So we wanna sample some other stuff in, so. So now I got a snare, and you know a little rim shot clap going i want to record say i want to record my vocal same thing hit sample check one two three check one two three maybe check, i want to add one, some two, effects three. to that check one two select three. that attract track check, in one, effects two, three. Check, check one two three check, check one two three check one two three check one two three. and then check, say i want to Control the check, volume. One, two, Let's go to our mixer. Check, one, two, Let's take that volume. Check, one, two, check, one, two, check, one, two, we got that going. Maybe we want to add check, some hi hats. We hit sampling. So now we got a hi hat going check, on. One, two, check, one, two, Maybe we want to add a synth check, now. One, two, There we go. Do that again. Nope, I missed the first note. So another thing too is when you're sampling, you can go in here and you can move around the position of your samples so that they start in different places. This obviously I played this off, but if you wanted to save it, you hit save, and then you can actually manipulate it even more once it's saved. So we're going to offload that, go back in here. We got all this. Check, one, two, three. 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 Check. And if you mess up like that, just unload it. You're good to go. Check one, two, three. Check one, two, three. Check 
And if you're hearing that delay, that is because the delay in the OP1 is running. So we can turn that off. you want a low bass like that. And then you have you have the record length down here. You have whether you want it to loop after you play. Right when I finish recording it, uh, I leave that on and it'll loop because if I don't have that on and let's offload that sample. So if I don't have it on and we're recording not going to play back until I trigger it. So now, you know, if you want it to loop, you just leave that guy on. As far as input monitoring goes, this over here, this little knob down here, it says input monitoring. Have that on if you have your headphones connected. If you don't have that signal split like, like I have it right now, so like my DJ mixer is what I'm running the synth and my vocals through right now. Without this DJ mixer, I would be plugging the synth directly in to the DJS or my microphone into some sort of mixer or preamp or whatever, and then plugging that into the DJS. And then the DJS goes into your DJ mixer, your 900. So the reason I have this like this is because we have this line mixer over here on the left side. That's what you're hearing everything through. So the line mixer is what we have the signal split going through. That's our main mixer. Without the line mixer, you have a DJ mixer. That DJ mixer typically gets your master signal from the DJS into your main mixer. Your main mixer goes out to the house. Whatever you want to run to your DJS 1000, like a synth or whatever, needs to get plugged in either directly into it or into a little line mixer and then you can monitor what you're playing off of headphones unless you have a 900 mixer and like i said then you have sends that you can use you run those sends back into the djs 1000 and then you monitor everything on your 900 mixer hopefully that makes some sense hopefully this helps out a little bit on how to sample random stuff like your vocals or other synths or different things like that into this djs 1000 also also, I don't know if you've seen the back. I think I showed you in the previous video, but quarter inch inputs here. And then you have uh, RCA outputs over here on the left as well. These RCA outputs or your quarter inch outputs, either one you can use. And then you have quarter inch inputs on this side to basically run anything into. And you have a mono or you have a stereo input as well. If you have a synthesizer that has MIDI, you can sync your MIDI with this MIDI in and out here. Your MIDI in and out will be able to, you know, sync the clock of your MIDI devices. But yeah, hopefully that helps figure some stuff out with the uh, DJS 1000. If you have any other questions, put it in the comments below. We'll do some more videos on this guy soon. I'll probably be posting up my, maybe like a performance video on this guy on my personal channel. So make sure to check that out. Hopefully that wasn't too much information. It's nighttime now. We took a little bit of time doing this. That's going to be it for Music Gear Monday. 100th episode coming up. Make sure you tune in. May live stream it here on this channel and over on Twitch. So stay tuned. I'll put some links in the description below. But that's going to be it for Music Gear Monday. I'm Carl Carell. We'll catch you guys here next week. Peace. Shout out to our sponsors today, Crate Connect Digital Record Pool, providing tons of new music, new releases, hundreds of different genres and chart topping hits, everything and anything, instrumentals, acapellas, Latin, Moonbatone, techno, dance hall, even country music. So if you're a DJ and you want to spruce up your music library, this is a great tool to utilize. The price is just right with different options from 30 days 90 days and 180 days with high resolution audio 
this is a great option for anybody wanting to expand their DJ library. They even have a clothing shop. This one's my favorite. Make sure to hop on over, check out Crate Connect. I will be putting a link in the description below, which will include a discounted price. So make sure to hop on that while it lasts.